salaries were very easy uh, because uh, they had, you know, with the computer, we could shake up and up, up and down the, the icons. So if the mother, which I never believed, said, oh no, my kid doesn't have any, you know, pop or any junk food, you know, we would try to be realistic and cut down. But many parents answer very realistically, and they would say, well, now that I see what junk food is, I need an entire page full of these icons. Um, the same thing, not to overwhelm, if a child tended to be very physically inactive, rather than giving a goal of 60 minutes a day, we actually try to say, okay, one or two bicycles, let's start with that. So shaping up and shaping down, it's a lot of what we did in our program. Uh, by the way, there is was a huge problem. So most kids started out with lots of milk, and this is something that, again, we're not really focusing. So we are introducing solid food uh, as pediatricians, and we're continuing a fair amount or high amount of milk. A uh, very, very practical approach, trying to explain that the, this is what's contained, and also trying to really explain something that confuses the heck out of me, so I can imagine with our patients, which is really a serving, is really a serving, but a bottle is containing more than one serving, sometimes two to three servings. So you're having your kid, again, to relate to the research that was presented before, um, we, we have a homestead park in Buffalo uh, at Delaware Park, and I always tell people, okay, you go all around the park, it's about two miles, well, you have burned only half of that bottle that you just gave to your child. So we really try to encourage water and, and, and try to own <coughs> sort of calories. Uh, if you think about it, both for adults and, and, and kids, for the kids it was the colored bottle and everything else, but access to things that make you want you to do things that are healthy. Um, and also we try to explain how much can you fit in 1,200 calories. And it's not that we're advocating that uh, you shouldn't have at all, you know, the ranch dressing, but perhaps it can be light. And perhaps, you know, don't put a whole tablespoon, put a half a tablespoon of margarine when you're doing the, the dinner. And identify that these two in red, these are in fact jam, junk food, and have to be counted. Physical activity goal, it's a customary 60 minutes a day for both parents and child in the intervention. We didn't talk at all with about that with the parents in the control group. Um, and I will tell you that my fear was actually uh, that um, most parents would actually start doing things, but it was quite amazing that that did, didn't really uh, um, happen. Or if it happened, it didn't translate, as you will see, in a positive result. Um, the, the, what we did different in the intervention is trying to give uh, planning tips and strategies to incorporate physical activity in their busy day. Uh, the behavioral modification was very extensive, was the key part of our program. Stimulus control, pre-planning, uh, praise, reward, and contracting, social support, changing black and white thinking. Uh, if you think about it, um, nobody teaches you how to be a parent. And if you think about the education that we impart, leave alone to medical students, but really healthcare professionals, about behavioral modification, readiness, and modeling, is still very, very inadequate, in my view. Um, we also had the children curriculum. So I wanted Real America, we started this program at the beginning of the recession. And I wanted real Americans to be in the study. Real Americans cannot afford babysitter at home. And so we had them bring uh, not only the participating kids, but any other kids. And yes, this was additional cost, but I think it was nice because we really did have everybody from all socioeconomic groups to be able uh, to be there. Uh, and uh, you know, the civics enjoyed being there as well. Um, the results that I'm presenting to you today are the results that I presented at Society for Pediatric Research at the Academic Society a few months ago. Uh, but the one year result, now that everybody has completed, is exactly what you are seeing right here. Um, and, and so what you're seeing here is more dropouts in the intervention. And yes, uh, this is um, um, something that I expected because you should see in the introduction meeting of the families uh, who were randomized to intervention, 
the open jaw, the discomfort and everything when I said the whole family is going to have to change. You are going to be the agent of change for your child. But what you also notice here that's remain truth is that if we can bring these kids to overcome the overwhelming feeling at, uh, in, in this period of time, then you're much more likely to carry them uh, forward. Here you see in black the characteristics of the children, about four and a half years of age as the uh, mean age. Uh, they were definitely way overweight for those who you are, who are familiar with CMI. This would be two standard deviation, way two standard deviation above you know, the mean for age. And the percent over BMI is just a formula that puts in relationship the BMI to the 50th percentile. And uh, so it's just another way to, to represent this. Um, and you see that we had a good uh, distribu ethnic distribution. Uh, parents uh, would be, um, from, my, from where I stand, I say young, I would say that uh, uh, they were still you know, young parents. Um, and uh, we had also participating uh, fathers. And um, the dropout rate did not actually, uh, uh, was, was not different when fathers were participating. But I can tell you that uh, when there was involvement of both parents, irrespective of whether it was a mother or a father participant, it made a big difference. Um, you see the BMI was, was high, and uh, so these were uh, real uh, people. Um, this shows to you the percent over BMI, and uh, the open circles are our control, inter uh, information control, and this is where uh, you have the closed circle, the intervention. And you can see that there was a sharp demarcation and then a little rebound in, in both groups at 12 months, but still statistically significant. Um, what I want to point out and what you don't see here is that there were a number of parents who ended up signing the consent and ended up going through the screening evaluation and actually doing some of the uh, extensive, actually, data collection and screening. But then they decided that they didn't want to come into the program. And what you see here, you know, keeping the percent over BMI steady is already a victory because if I were to show you the data in that group, that group is going up this way. And the same is for the kids who were approached and the parents said to the pediatrician, no, thank you, we don't want to do the program right now. Um, this is the parents' BMI change, uh, uh, and you can see it starts uh, similar here, and it goes down a little bit and rebounds, but uh, the uh, parents in the intervention group were actually uh, down uh, consistently. And because I knew there would be a fair amount of people in the audience who are um, taking care of adults and familiar with adults, you can see here the differential in, in terms of, of uh, uh, pounds. Again, we did not push for the quick weight loss. Uh, we pushed for trying to get them there and, and keep it down. Uh, this is a graph that uh, shows that we had a correlation between children and parent uh, at 52 weeks. Um, so when the parent doesn't do well and is not invested, the child is not likely to be invested. And I will tell you that when you look at the information control, um, the kids who did well are those few kids where the parents actually started doing changes for everybody and you know, ask questions. And uh, you know, ethically, I also you know, believe that we should give them all the answers and all the tools, even if they were in the control group. So in conclusion, the Buffalo Healthy Thoughts program successfully translates to the primary care setting more intense and complex behavioral family-based programs delivered in specialized obesity clinics. This interim analysis shows that treating concurrently preschool children and parents um, for behavioral weight control results in greater reduction of percent over BMI and even ZBMI and BMI in the parents compared to a traditional approach focusing on young children. Uh, our data confirms an association between uh, child and parent weight changes, <laughs> underscoring the importance of parents being role models and agents of change for the child 
and being willing to make healthy changes for themselves, their child, and whole family. Um, I want to thank everybody, including the study, uh, the, NH the NHCHD, for supporting the study, children and parents and pediatricians, my co-investigators, coordinators, and staff, and thank you for your attention. Now it's open for the question to Dr. Petrin. Yes. It's basically more of curiosity. I know um, you did not mention, but uh, there are some studies that are talking about the difference between babies when they are breastfed and bottle fed, and then the consequence later on when they are toddlers. And basically, the idea behind is when they are breastfed, they are actually taking as much as actually they need. When they are actually bottle fed, we're giving amounts that we think the average would fit for everybody, for all the other babies. So as a consequence, as they become toddlers, the bottle fat ones have a chance to be obese against the other ones that the rest. I don't know if you have any... Yeah, uh, breastfeeding is, is a very, very, very important issue. Uh, unfortunately, there is social disparity also yeah. with breastfeeding. Um, we again are not proud of that and we're trying to make a change because within New York State, actually, our community has the lowest rate of breastfeeding. So we're working very much to try to enhance that. Uh, I think you're absolutely right uh, that it's very important, but it's, uh, it's the components in the milk, but it's also something very behavioral. Yes, the baby's taking what he or she wants, but it's also a behavior that is um, a behavior that is different on the part of the moms. Uh, in that there's a lot of research that also shows that, you know, how compulsive you can be in putting, you know, the bottle uh, and, you know, in their mouth and how compulsive is also the early use of the bottle. <coughs> uh, unfortunately, also the juice as a pacifier. So it's the initial, you know, a chain of, of reward that, that, that is wrong and then catches us as, as adults having a bad day and having a lot of coffee or chocolate, whatever it is. Um, I, I, I think also um, the issue is that, you know, even though we're trying to really push that in the American Academy of Pediatrics and all of the other, you know, society, um, the breastfeeding is not something acceptable, you know, what used to be acceptable in the past that you would have seen a mother maybe breastfeed a one-year-old, now she's going to, I'm sure you've seen the cover on the, on the Time uh, magazine uh, on that. It's not accepted, um, and unfortunately, women have to go back to work, uh, even at work again. I'm looking, I'm looking at that in our hospital. We don't make it exactly easy for our medical students, our trainees, to, to breastfeed, you know, to pump and, and do all sorts of things. But it is a very, it's one of those factors that throughout evidence-based and the literature, nobody can contact that has a, whether it has an antiopathogenetic role or not, but it has a definite relationship uh, in a positive sense of preventing overweight. Thank you. That's a question. No, thanks. Um, I was just interested in your comment about when both parents attended, and I just wondered what the statistics were for both parents attending the meetings. That was the first question. And the second um, point of interest was uh, there was a study in the UK called the Early Birds Study which looked at interventions in children and they found a huge um, effect of gender. So they found that a mother seems to influence the girl's weight and the father influences the, the boy's weight. And I just wondered whether you had done any sub-analyses to look at that. Please answer as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so um, uh, um, the first question uh, related to the, to, I wanted to clarify what I said. Even, uh, it, it seems to us, we haven't completed the analysis that, um, yes, we have both parents' attendance, and sometimes we be grandmother with a mother, whatever, uh, made a difference, but it was really the fact that they were both involved. In other terms, uh, we always would offer, we had emails of both, we would send the PowerPoint to the other spouse, whatever. But it was when the parents, even though they may not be there, is the support. And I think that when we are both, we have kept track of that, though we didn't have specific uh, measures, measuring device, 
that we will see a difference depending on that. Uh, predictive values uh, and uh, of, 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 of a relationship. We are looking at that, but I think we will also uh, find that, as well as uh, the, the initial weight of the parent might actually define what's happening to the outcome of the kids. So gender, gender, and initial weight. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to the next presentation. Uh, Dr. James Clark from the Manchester Community College. Her title is Resistance Exercise in Treatment Options.